Can you tell I'm really excited? Do you know why I'm excited? Because React Native Script is here. All right, for those folks that are not familiar with this yet, React Native Script, just like Native Script View and Native Script Angular, are all additions on the core Native Script platform or the core Native Script framework. So there's Native Script, and on top of that, you have Native Script Angular, Native Script View, and now you have React Native Script. In the case of React Native Script, Jamie Birch has been the driving force of the development process. This library is now in the process of being documented. But here we're gonna take the first look at actually using it. Native Script has always been good for those people that are coming from the web development world, but so far it's only been JavaScript, TypeScript, Angular, and Vue. So here we have a chance for those folks that are familiar with the React framework and those that use React on the web to get into native development. So the biggest question is why use React Native Script when you can use React Native? The biggest win here that Native Script allows you to do is that you can write JavaScript code and talk directly to the iOS and Android APIs. So you can trigger the APIs right in your JavaScript code. You can even look and Google for questions that you might have about how to do something in iOS. And then you get a Stack Overflow answer that tells you how to do it. But guess what? It tells you how to do it in Objective-C. Well, with NativeScript, you can just take that code and just JavaScriptify it. In other words, just change the way the variables are called, make it JavaScript, and it'll work right out of the box. You don't need to have any other plugin installed. And that's the huge win about NativeScript. You also get the marshalling back and forth between the native object in the JavaScript world. This allows you to remain in JavaScript land as you're developing, and this allows for quick refresh of your code. So you change some code, you get hot module replacement, triggering your changes, and you get a really quick responsive development experience. All right, I've talked about this enough. Let's jump in and try this out. So here is the template that you can use for React Native Script. It's available on Jamie's GitHub account and it's the TNS template blank React project. We're gonna start off here and actually I'm just gonna use what he's got right here. I'm gonna copy this line, TNS create, then we give the project name and then the template name based on React, just like we would create any other Native Script application, but we're using a different template, that's all. That's the only difference. You don't need any special flags or anything. It's just a different template. So this is gonna go through and create the project for us and download all the related packages, which we're gonna take a look at shortly. All right, so you have the project created. I'm gonna switch directories to my blank React and open this up in VS Code. Let's look at package.json. So we have the latest version of native script. The core modules is at 6.1 right now. And check it out. We have React 16.9. Then we have React native script, which is at version 0.120. This is that glue that sits between native script and React. And then we have the types for React. We're using SAS here. And we have React hot loader. So not too many dependencies. Now on the outside here, inside the root of the project, things look just like they would on any other native script project but when you open up the app folder well here you also see everything pretty much looking the same we have the root app.ts file but inside here things are a little bit different so here we have react root and we have a way to kick off our react application using the first element or the root element which is going to be the app container so if we take a look at that that's inside components we have this root tsx file so TSX is supported here. I actually don't know if JSX is supported out of the box, but TypeScript is supported and I'm happy about that because types help us out quite a bit. So I'm not gonna complain. All right, so here we have the app container. Everything is JavaScript here. There is no separate XML file to define your UI. If you're familiar with React, you know that we define everything in the TSX. So that's right here inside the render function, the frame, the page, and the action bar. I love the fact that the frame is exposed here, just like in native script view. You can actually control nested frames. And I have a couple of tutorials on this channel about using nested frames. We do a bottom sheet tutorial with that. And in my native script pro course on native scripting, I talk about how to do a layered approach with nested framing so you can have a global popover in your application that's available on all pages 
Having an exposed frame like this is very useful in a native script application. Then you have a page living inside of that and you can have other frames hosted inside the page. You'll notice one thing here that's interesting is each one of these components has a dollar in front of it. So the ones that we're used to, if you're working with native script core or native script angular or native script view, here you would say frame without the dollar and not dollar label, but just label. Every single UI widget that comes with native script in the TNS core library is going to have this dollar prepended to it if you want to use it inside JavaScript. And the reason for that is that so there's no name clashes between the widgets that are available in the core and the ones that are available here exposed to TSX and React Native Script. So what other changes are there? Well, one cool thing that I've noticed here is that for labels, instead of specifying the text property on the label, the text attribute, well, this is actually property because we're dealing with React. It looks like it's XML, so I would call it an attribute in that case, but here it's a property. Now for labels, you could specify the text property or you could specify it in line just like that. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. I'm gonna say TNS run iOS. And notice I'm not using the dash dash bundle flag. This will just work without the bundle flag. All right, so while that's building, I'm just gonna say a few other points. You might ask, what is the compatibility with the current React ecosystem if you're coming from the React world? For example, can you use Redux? and other React related libraries? The answer to that is yes, you can use Redux because it's simply a state store and it's just a JavaScript library. And you can use JavaScript libraries that don't depend on the window object of the browser or the document model of the browser. You can use that in native script. So just as a reminder, any NPM package out there like moment.js and lodash, those are compatible with native script because they're just JavaScript. And same thing goes for Redux and other libraries that are geared towards React users, but don't depend on the DOM. Given that React navigation won't work with React native script because React navigation depends on the DOM. So we have to use native scripts navigation model in React native script. So if you're coming from React world on the web and you wanna use navigation, you're gonna to have to do a little bit of learning and figure out how to use the native navigation that comes with native script. Okay, so what about React DevTools? React DevTools are also supported according to Jamie. He is currently in the process of documenting everything, so keep an eye out on the project. All right, so now we have this message pop up. The actual application is actually running here, so we're good to go. Let's see what we have. In the action bar, we have the title home. I've changed that so far, but I didn't save my file. If I save my file, then theoretically this should update. And yes, it does. So now the action bar title says hello. So that means that HMR is working in the background and all changes are being applied on the fly using Webpack. So I played around with a little bit with this last night. And you know what else I really like about this? Now that we have everything in JavaScript code, all these UI widgets, guess what? We can just go in here and have full IntelliSense because we're using TypeScript on the properties that are available. So on the action bar, I can hit control space and check it out. I get the whole list of all the different properties that are available on this, which is really handy to have that. Well, let's see how simple it would be for me to create a button here to add a button to this list of UI widgets and see if I can add a tab handler that'll handle a button tap. All right, so I'm gonna go down here. Here is my grid layout and we have a label inside of that. I'm going to add another row that's gonna have a button. So I'm gonna use dollar button. I'm gonna add a text property here with the word tap. Let's see if it shows up first of all. Oh, there it is. Our button takes up the whole screen. Yeah, because we're dealing with the grid layout. So of course the button is gonna take up the full amount of space here. So let's separate this out. The grid layout has a rows property. We wanna put the label in the first row and the button in the second row. Here is another weird thing that I found out about this is in native script, when we're defining rows for a grid layout, we can just include a string and that string gets parsed on the back end. But that string actually gets converted to something called an item spec. An item spec is just a pair of a number and then the type. In this case, we have item spec one and then star. That means it's whatever is in this grid layout is gonna take up 
the entire space for that one row. This is just a JavaScript way of defining that string. It's something to get used to, but I think uh, that the folks at NativeScript actually heard Jamie on this and they're gonna start allowing that piece of the core library to be used here to convert the string representation into the code representation. But anyway, before that happens, you can still use this. It's just a matter of adding another element to the array. So this is row one. And now in an array of rows, we can just add another item spec copy this and paste it here new item spec one star that means we're going to have two rows each one of them is going to take an even amount of space on the screen so label is going to be in row zero and our button is going to be in row one so i'm going to paste it here and put row one for the button and there we go so our label is at the top says message and our button is down here now let's add a tap event to the button so i'm going to say tap oh look at that it doesn't have a tap event but there is an on tap and that's pretty cool. I just found this out by typing tap and IntelliSense helped me out here. So that's another difference here is that there's no tap event. There's on tap. Now I need to put some kind of function here. My on tap. Let's call it that. And I need to define it somewhere. So let's go back up here to this class and say public my on tap. This is going to be our function. And we're going to use alert API and say hi there. Let's say this dot my on tap. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and save everything here and let's tap on this button and we get an alert that says hi there. So that's pretty simple, right? Just like you're used to in React. You assign an event handler here and then you can have that event handler right here in the code in the class. All right, I got to say, I'm a really big fan of React. I have been for a long time and I'm really excited about having React native script. I want to thank Jamie for putting this together and I hope that the NativeScript team adopts this and starts supporting it to get more hands and eyes working on this project. Of course, it is open source, so anybody out there that wants to help out with this, you can hop into the repository and start contributing. There are a couple of other questions that are outstanding, like will hooks be supported? And from what I understand, uh, they will be because we're dealing with JavaScript. But maybe Jamie can chime in down on the bottom in the comments there. And if you will have any questions about React Native Script, let me know down in the comments below. If you want to see more content about React Native Script on this channel, let me know down in the comments also. And I'll catch you in the next one.